Earlier this week, President Donald Trump tapped Judge Brett Kavanaugh as his nominee for the Supreme Judicial Court seat, being vacated by retiring Justice Anthony Kennedy. And Massachusetts Senators Edward Markey and Elizabeth Warren were quick to say how they'll vote on the matter. The answer? No. So, knowing that, why should you stay dialed in as the Senate gears up to consider if it will confirm the president's pick? I got answers from Western New England School of Law professor Matthew Charity. When you are looking at a Supreme Court justice and you're trying to figure out what they're going to do, not just during your lifetime, but we're looking at someone who's likely going to be on the court for 20, 30 years. Yeah, he's in his 50s. Uh, that's right. That's right. So we're looking at someone who is going to be making decisions that are going to impact uh, our lives, our children's lives uh, for generations. Can you help our viewers understand the difference between an appellate court judge, which Judge Kavanaugh is currently in D.C., versus a Supreme Court judge and how they approach the law differently? Right. Uh, I think Justice Sotomayor said in her confirmation process that there is a distinction that needs to be made between a trial court judge uh, whose focus is going to be on the facts before them uh, and how the law applies to that and the appellate court that's going to focus more on whether the law has been properly interpreted, mm. but that will follow the precedent and will follow stare decisis, will look to what the court has decided in the past, uh, particularly what the Supreme Court has decided, and follow the rules set by those cases. The Supreme Court is in a very different position. Uh, it's in a, a position to actually make policy decisions. Um, it will try to follow what Congress has set out, but it will do so in a way that looks toward the relationship between the executive branch and uh, the legislative and judiciary branches. Uh, that's, that's an area where Judge Kavanaugh uh, might make some movements uh, based on his belief in the strong executive branch. Right, and he actually has, has come out and said that, and there's been some concern. Uh, actually, Senator Markey, he tweeted saying that Brett Kavanaugh was the only nominee on Trump's short list who, was, who has written that a sitting president should not be indicted. It's not a coincidence that he was selected. And, of course, that's Senator, uh, Senator Markey's uh, opinion about that. Do you think that had any bearing on, on why President Trump ultimately tapped Kavanaugh? Uh, you know, it's hard to go into the thinking of the president when making a nomination. I will say that the strong executive, uh, the belief that there is a unitary executive, that there should be a president that can answer for whatever the executive branch is doing, is something that Kavanaugh has come out uh, on in a way that is different than some other judges. And I think that that would be appealing to many people uh, who are sitting in that position, sitting as president. When I looked at uh, Justice Kagan's nomination and Justice Gorsuch's nomination, they both, it was about a three month period from nomination to their being confirmed. And with this, do you think that's any indication of how this process might go? It's very contentious. Will it take longer, more time? Well, that's the real question. The Republicans in the Senate are likely going to push for it to go through more quickly. Uh, the Democrats, on the other hand, are likely going to try to pull things back a little bit, uh, make it go a little bit more slowly. That will give more interest groups as well as uh, common people an opportunity to look at the record that Judge Kavanaugh has and to, con uh, to contact their senator and to ask questions. If they slow it down, I think it makes it a little bit more difficult for Judge Kavanaugh to go through the process. If they speed it up, it will be a little bit uh, easier, I think, for Judge Kavanaugh, just because it takes time for those who want to challenge a, a particular nominee to come up with an understanding of where the nominee stands on a number of different issues. And that slowing down portion, you think that that gets in the way because people can more carefully look at the record, or, or why? Uh, people can look at their record more carefully. Organizations that are trying to be thoughtful as to what the impact of that judge becoming a justice have a chance to talk to their constituents too. And constituents get a chance to talk to their senators. So I think all of that combined with the, the argument that has been made that we should let voters opine on a Supreme Court nominee uh, by waiting until after an election. The closer we get to the election, I, I think the more likely it is that that seems to hold water with some of the, the uh, 
people who are, are concerned about the direction of the Supreme Court. So Charlie Savage of the New York Times wrote something this week, and it looked at uh, Kavanaugh, Judge Kavanaugh's record a bit. And according to Mr. Savage, he said that uh, Judge Kavanaugh favored corporations over regulations and government over individuals. Um, but there's been some reporting that, as we know, Judge Kavanaugh clerked for former Justice Kennedy, who is retired. So could Kavanaugh be more of a swing vote? Could we look to that? What do you think? I think it's hard to know whether he would be a swing vote. Uh, I think he is, from what we currently know about his record, to the right of Justice Kennedy. A part of that has to do with his work in the Bush White House. Uh, following his term working there, he shifted towards a stronger view on presidential power. Obviously, as someone who looked into President Clinton while working with Ken Starr in the 1990s, that, that shift is something that uh, occurs because of his work in the White House. Interesting that he worked, he actually wrote the Star Report, and now we hear him saying or have heard him say in the past, he doesn't think that a sitting, sitting president should be investigated. So right. interesting sort of duality of viewpoint there. Right. But, but I think that that comes from his time working in the Bush White House. And the Bush White House had a strong belief in that unitary executive power. So as we continue here, uh, we've seen that Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer has come out and said he thinks that Democrats have a path to uh, possibly blocking this nomination. And we know it's very tight, right? In the Senate, it's it's 50 to 49, essentially, because Senator McCain is ill and probably not going to be able to to, to weigh in on this matter. Um, and, and Chuck Schumer said that abortion rights and the Affordable Care Act are going to be the way that Democrats might raise sort of the consciousness of the American people and say, like, these are two areas that you should be mindful of because I think uh, speaking for Senator Schumer, he thinks that these are areas that uh, Judge Kavanaugh might overturn. Given what we know about Judge Kavanaugh's record in terms of favoring corporations or favoring government, do you think that this could hint at where he would stand on Roe v. Wade? Well, I think the Garza versus Hargan decision uh, in which he was able to look at the right of a, uh, a woman who was an immigrant and her opportunity to, to get an abortion is an indicator that he is not protective necessarily of that right. So uh, I, I think that that's something that particularly those who are uh, anti-abortion uh, might view as an indicator of the direction he might go. There isn't a lot out there on how he feels on reproductive rights, to my knowledge, but the belief in making regulations for businesses um, a little bit lighter, while at the same time not being as protective of individual rights, is something that might indicate that he would not be strong on the protection of a woman's right to choose. Do you think too much is being made of the Roe v. Wade uh, issue coming before the SJC? About half a dozen states right now are, are looking at laws, the court system is looking at laws in those states, but it would still need to get to the Supreme Court level in order for this to even become an issue. Uh, that's right, but I think that there are a number of courts that have created laws that more tightly regulate uh, the a woman's attempt to get health care, let alone an abortion. And therefore, it's likely that an issue could come up before the Supreme Court, uh, especially because when you get a shift from, let's say, a 24-hour waiting period and counseling to a 72-hour uh, waiting period, when you're getting those shifts in states across the country, you're going to get situations in which some women are going to say, I need additional help. I need to have my rights uh, be a little bit clearer. I, I need to have a, a faster opportunity uh, to consider an abortion. And once you have that conflict, then I think it's easier to get a case that might go up to the Supreme Court. Because again, we're looking at state regulations and we're seeing more and more uh, state regulations and uh, a, n a number of states, I don't have the, the number in front of me, that are limiting the number of clinics that provide abortions as well as women's health care.